four years, the MEAC title has been won by either Maryland Eastern Shore or Norfolk State. The same will hold true this season. The Lady Hawks seek their third consecutive and eighth overall conference championship. Today, they face the 2012 champs, Norfolk State's Spartans. The lanes are oil, the pins are set. The MEAC Conference Championship starts now. in Chesapeake, Virginia for the 2015 MEAC Bowling Championship. And today, the Norfolk State Spartans, who finished third in the Southern Division, will take on the Northern Division winner and two-time defending champs, the University of Maryland, Eastern Shore. Hello, everyone. Charlie Neal, along with my partner, PBA Hall of Famer Randy Peterson, we welcome you to Chesapeake, Virginia, and this bowling championship for the MEAC. And over the last four years, it's been either Norfolk State or the University of Maryland Eastern Shore winning this championship. But University of Maryland Eastern Shore has dominated the sport seven times in the 15 years since the MEAC has started this, this championship. The question today, Randy, is can they make it number eight? Uh, Charlie, I really think they can. UMES is the perennial powerhouse in the MEAC. They've really dominated this conference, and all the teams in the conference know that they're the team to beat. This season, they went 29-1 in conference play, their only defeat coming at the hands of Norfolk State. So today, for UMES, it's not only title number eight on the line, but also redemption. A little revenge, too, also. Let's talk about some of the players we're going to watch. We'll start with Norfolk State and their anchor bowler, a young lady by the name of Delilah Bethel. Well, Delilah Bethel performed brilliantly as a freshman three years ago, and she will have to infuse her teammates with that experience and moxie for them to have a chance today. On the other side, the University of Maryland Eastern Shore is going with their rookie of the year, Lashana Saros. Saros has what I call the prototypical power game, Charlie, typically seen on the men's pro tour. As if UMES wasn't imposing enough, Norfolk State gets to watch Saros anchor the Lady Hawks. All right, let's check out the format. It's a Baker format for this MEAC Women's Bowling Championship. It's a five-person team with each player bowling one frame. The pattern repeats for frames six through ten. The match is the best of seven, and there is no double elimination. As far as the starting lineups, let's take a look. Starting with Norfolk State, they'll lead off with Carrie Hickey, followed by Courtney Williford, Courtney Brown, Kelsey Yarborough, Delilah Bethel will be the anchor bowler for the Lady Spartans. For the University of Maryland Eastern Shore, they'll be led by Victoria Jones, followed by Valerie Riggin, Tatiana Munoz, Mariano Alvarado, and the anchor bowler for them is the rookie of the year for the conference, Lashana Saros. We'll have more of the 2015 MIAC Women's Bowling Championship after this. You are watching the MIAC Bowling Championships on ESPNU. University of Maryland East and Shore on deck first. Valerie Riggin, the senior out of Vista, California, first up. <laughs> Not a bad way to start, is it? Yeah, and that's the kind of start you look for in your leadoff bowler in a Baker format, getting off to a, a red hot start. Nice shot here by Valerie. Great knee bend at the foul line there. And yeah, there's a, an old bowling announcer that used to say, hit them thin and watch them spin, Charlie. <laughs> and Coach Kayla Bandy just switched her lineup just before the first bowler came up. Normally, it would be Valerie Riggin bowling second and Victoria Jones going first, but she decided for whatever reason to make that switch, and <laughs> it paid off. So Carrie Hickey now for Norfolk State, junior, red shirt, out of Palm Harbor, Harbor, Florida. And she strikes. What a great shot by Carrie. And a great answer to the UMES start. See that hand open up a little bit at the top of the swing. Notice that big knee brace. She's way too young to be having knee problems. Trust me, I had three knee surgeries because of the sport of bowling. But a yeah, great result nonetheless. She had knee surgery a year ago, had to sit out last season. As we look at Victoria Jones. And one of only two Southpaws that we have the championship match today. 
Victoria will now try to get the ball to the right side of the head pin, throw the head pin over into the seven, and the ball will take out the three and the six. One, three, six, seven, washout. She had the right idea, still left the seven pin standing. Yeah, I didn't catch enough of the head pin, Charlie. Good try, though. And maybe that was the reason why Coach Bandy made that change. Tough reaction thus far. I know it's early, but maybe it's just a ball reaction issue for Victoria Jones. A couple pins left standing for Courtney Williford. And we talk about it all the time in this format with the oil pattern, lane conditions being so difficult, how important it is to hit the head pin with every ball thrown. And obviously that, that sounds like a, a very elementary way to go about it. But think about this. If you hit the head pin with every shot, your chances of pulling a pretty good score increase. Williford, senior out of Norfolk, Virginia, picks up the spare. Well, that's very important. You don't want to leave any open frames. Well, you know, in the second frame, Victoria Jones misses the head pin, leaves a washout, and now UMES is trailing because they have an open frame. Courtney Williford goes through the nose, doesn't leave the split, leaves a 3-6 spare. She converts it, and they have the early lead here in game one. Senior out of Columbia, 5-2. This is Tatiana Munoz, first team all conference selection this year. Pretty good shot there and a nice break, tripping out the six pin late. You know, I remember Tatiana from last season, and you know, they say dynamite comes in small packages. <laughs> she really ignited this team, and uh, she was uh, one of the main reasons why. University of Maryland Eastern Shore did so well in, in route to winning. Very elegant, too. You're very subtle. You don't even hit a ball at the, the lane. Well, she's she's only about five foot two, so she doesn't have a long way to go to get the ball down to the to the foul line. You know, guys like myself that are six two, we we had to really use our, our lower bodies and a lot of upper body tilt to get the ball down to the to the lane. Courtney Brown, senior. Jackson, New Jersey, where she hails from. Tough split. I really like Courtney Brown's game. It's real simple. She gets the ball into the swing, not a lot of moving parts, and very soft at the bottom of the swing. And that ball there just a little bit right of target. And again, just barely catching the head pin. She leaves the 2 10 split. She's looking to slide the two pin over into the 10 and stay clean. There is the two pin right there. Look to drive that to the right. And she does. What a spare for Courtney Brown. What a great shot. It's all about filling frames in a Baker style format, especially when the conditions are tough. Courtney Brown converts the 210 perfectly. Very good for the young lady from Memorial High up in Jackson, New Jersey, right down the street from that amusement park. Great adventure, about 10 minutes from her house. <laughs> you know, we did we did a, a summer series there, and I actually rode that roller, roller coaster, coaster called King Da Ka. Uh, Let me tell you something. Brave I had, guy, huh? I almost had a heart attack. <laughs> Mariano Alvarado, one of the veterans of this UMES squad. Yeah, and, and this is one of the games on... Uh, UMES's team that I really like. Alvarado's got just a great natural talent. Great leverage at the foul line. Timing, swing, she's got it all. She's the real deal. Senior out of Mexico. First team all conference selection this year. Trying to pick up the spare and she does. As they would say in Mexico, Charlie, muy bueno. <laughs> this is Kelsey Yarborough, senior out of Winston-Salem, North Carolina. 5'8", senior. And she gets the strike. Now, that's the little down and in shot there that trips the four pin. All the momentum right now 
in the Norfolk State camp. Eyes on the target, steady head, great knee bend at the foul line. She's asking for that, that ball to fall back just a little bit, and there's that nice little love tap on the four pin. Shina Soros is on deck. Now, th this is uh, one of the most interesting games I've seen in women's bowling in a long time. She throws it like the power players on my tour do today. She drops the ball into the swing early, waits for it at the top, runs after it, and then just rips on it at the bottom of the swing. And that's why she's playing a the much anchor. deeper angle than all the other players. She's got more power. And she just transferred from the University of Aruba. Comes in as a junior, but a rookie as far as the conference is concerned. First year at UMES as we look at Delilah Bethel. She leaves, she leaves three standing. Delilah Bethel, senior out of Piscataway, New Jersey. Picks up the spare. So no open frames for Norfolk State. The first five frames back with frames six through ten. Game number one in a moment. Dennis Thomas, the commissioner of the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference on hand. He's been a busy man lately. He's has teams been all over the place in terms of basketball, both the men and the women. And uh, now he's here watching one of the top sports in the conference in terms of recognition, and that is bowling. They've won a number of uh, NCAA championships, and here's Merlin Eastern Shores, Valerie Reagan, frame number six. I shook, I shook his hand earlier, about broke my hand. <laughs> well, he used to be a football coach. Well, <laughs> I'll tell you what, I, I wish you would have warned me. Now, you talk about good breaks. I didn't get one when he, he uh, crushed my hand, but this is a great break. Watch this. Six pin goes to the sidewall. This is a weak 10. That, that pin should have just laid dead in the gutter. Instead, the little love uh, tap on the 10. Guess what? We have a two pin match. Made a difference, says Carrie Hickey. This is frame number six. She leaves the seven pin. Well, you can see the amount of torque that she puts on her knee and the position that she gets into at the foul line. This is a sport where it's extremely important to be very strong from the waist down. The legs basically are the engine. They're the, the engine, the framework, the foundation of the bowling game. Chemistry major from Palm Harbor, Florida. Picks up the spare. Big shot coming up right here. Victoria Jones, she left an open frame. The second frame, but here in number seven, she comes through with a strike. Looks like Mr. Mo Menem has changed his address. <laughs> it might have, as we look at Courtney Williford. All the mojo now on the UMES side, they're working on three strikes in a row, no strikes working for Norfolk State, even though they're clean through six frames, this could be seven. Williford picks up the spare. Tatiana Munoz. That she lives by the advice her dad Edgar gave her of trusting yourself. And she trusted herself into a strike that time, didn't she? Well, that's just a great shot. You know, the thing you have to look at is these players only get to throw two shots a game, with the exception of the anchor bowlers who get to finish the 10th frame. So the, the players sit for an awful long time. You look at the shot that Tatiana throws right here. I mean, you just can't throw it any better than that. I mean, that, that's spectacular. Working on three in a row, comes back, throws that shot. That, that could have very well 
that sealed the deal here in game one. Courtney Brown on deck, and you spoke of that, Randy. How hard is it, having been on the circuit, to, to do and work in a Baker-type format? It's extremely difficult. The lanes change a little bit. You're not seeing the transition. You're only throwing two shots a game. It's t you know It totally goes against everything that you've trained yourself to do, uh, with the exception of collegiate bowling. We don't see Baker formats. Mariana Alvarado. A little too pumped up, a little too aggressive there, but it's okay if she can come back and convert the one, two, four. See, and there's the sign of the pressure of Bowen Baker. You've got four other players back there rooting you on, and I think there's probably even more pressure than if you were bowling in a singles competition. In a singles competition, you do that, you're like, oh, well, I just let myself down. Now in Baker, you turn around, there's four other teammates there that you have to face. Norfolk State can strike out to shoot 226. The best UMES can shoot 223. So if Norfolk strikes out ninth and 10th frame, they win game one. Kelsey Yarborough, frame number four, rolled a strike. How about another one? Wow, just brilliant. Kelsey Yarborough steps up and trips the four pin in the fourth frame, and then here in the ninth, sets up the tenth frame for her team to have a chance to win. Shina Soros, the anchor bowler from Aruba. Wide right mistake. The fourth and fifth bowlers for UMES both whiffed the head pin while working on a four-bagger. I mean, they could have put this game away. Instead, she's left herself with a 1-2-7 spare conversion, and this one is very choppable. The seven pin obviously is the trouble pin. She's gonna have to get the ball to hook into this spare and have the ball deflect off of the one and the two pin to take out the seven. So Rose does it. So she gets another shot here in the 10th frame. Well, that's not the way I would have shot that, but it's still a spare. It worked. Nonetheless. <laughs> and uh, here's the situation with any good count right here. Delilah Bethel can step up in the 10th frame, throw one strike, and get good count. And Norfolk State is going to win game one. Soros. That's pretty good uh, showing there at the end. Well, this is the one she wanted in the first frame, but nevertheless, there, there was nothing that she could have done to shut out Norfolk State. So right now, Delilah Bethel needs the first strike and then seven spare, Two. and they're, and they're going to win game one. We spoke to Delilah Bethel of Norfolk State on the important aspect of being the anchor bowler. Being anchor, you have to stay calm, especially when sometimes it does come down to you you need to make good shots. So staying calm and staying focused is very important. Has to have all 10 right here. A lot of pressure. Anchor bowler, that's what it's all about. The lefty. The Scataway, New Jersey strikes. Does wow. what she needs to do. This is what makes college athletics so <laughs> awesome. Our own version of March Madness right here. This is just a look at her lean back. Look at her form. Shot. Look at her form, though. She caught all of that one. Yes, she did. She's got to have seven spare. If she gets six, we have the possibility of a tie. UMES in with a 210 right now. Here's Bethel shot. How about that finish? And the, and the look on the faces of the UMES players and she is, has another role <laughs> is that a hey disbelief they had it they were trailing in the match they come back with a four bagger fifth sixth seventh and eighth frame only to step up in the ninth and tenth and lose it so here's miss bethel
He's the seven, but that's okay. Norfolk State takes game one of this best of seven Baker format. Bowling championships between Norfolk State and the University of Maryland Eastern Shore. Due to time constraints, we move ahead in our action. The 2015 NCAA Women's Bowling Championship will take place at Tropicana Lanes in St. Louis, Missouri. Coverage begins Saturday, April 11th at 8 p.m. Eastern on ESPNU. This is number five, fifth game of this best of seven. Norfolk State had a three to nothing lead. Was right in the driver's seat there, but the China Soros. The rookie of the year in the MIAC came through big in that 10th frame for the Lady Hawks as Tatiana Munoz gets ready to bowl here in game number five. Well, Tatiana's taking a page out of Valerie Riggins' uh, playbook, going much straighter with a ball that doesn't react real hard down lane. And that was just a great shot. Ten in the pit there. No open frame this time <laughs> with her third strike of the day. I love, I, I just love watching her and her reactions after she strikes. She is so fun. So here's the young lady you spoke about, Valerie Riggins, who's had a big day for this Lady Hawk squad. Six strikes, one open frame, and that was in... Game number two. <laughs> Nobody has thrown more strikes today for UMES than that young lady right there. Five in a row for Valerie Reagan. Courtney Williford. You know, the longer UMES can be allowed to hang, hang around, around. <laughs> you don't let. <laughs> the, the defending champs hang too long because they figure a way, don't they? Well, you know, when, when Muhammad Ali had in his, his opponent on the ropes, he finished it. He didn't let him catch a breather or, or recover or get his wits about him and then go, okay, all right, now we can continue. He knocked him out. Twenty-four pin lead now for UMES. They were down three games to none. They're trying to make it three-two, knowing going into game number four they would have to win four straight games in order to repeat as a champion. Great Se shot. Seven pin stands, but it is a good shot for Victoria Jones. It, it's a really good shot because she does exactly what her teammates are doing. She moves a little bit right excuse me, a little bit left on the approach and goes much straighter with more ball speed and tries to keep the ball on line. I like it. So she can convert this spare, a 23-pin lead for UMES. And she does. So we're starting to see the UMES team we're accustomed to seeing. All of a sudden, there's a little life on that side of the street. This is Courtney Brown. She has had a strike in every frame except two. And she continues to roll. Nobody has thrown more strikes today for Norfolk State than Courtney Brown. AKA, AKA the Terminator. The term. She has seven strikes to her credit. I like her game. It's nice and simple. Keeps the ball in, in her target in front of her. And she's performed brilliantly throughout today's competition. As we look at Mariana Alvarado, two strikes to her credit today. Still trying to play that deep inside line. It just doesn't work. The pattern's too flat. Grab a ball that goes straighter, move right, and keep the ball in play. It's just, it's that's the, the way to play this oil pattern. Oil pattern early on in the contest compared to now we're in game number five. Back ends were, were much fresher when we first started, so there's going to be more down lane reaction. Well, the oil carries down the lane, the front end start to break down, so the ball reaction down lane starts to become less and less. The front end 
the ball starts to read a little bit sooner. What do you have to do? You back your hand out of it, try to go a little bit straighter. Missed the spare. Missed her target wide right. She's throwing a plastic ball. This ball's not going to curve. But again, I think that's just more mental mistake than anything else. Here's Kelsey Yarborough from Morton State. Big strike for her, back to back. And look how quickly things can turn. An open frame by conceivably an easy spare conversion that's whiffed in the fourth. Norfolk State comes back with two strikes in the third and fourth. Now they only trail by one pin. Vagina, Saros. Well, she makes a ball change at the end of the last game, and it worked on the right lane. I was, I was very interested to see what would happen on the left lane, and this ball reaction is perfect. So let's see. They each team with an open frame here in this game number five, the first five frames. Let's see what Miss Bethel can do. Got lucky. <laughs> How lucky can you be? The hey. seven, the seven just fell at the right, right time, didn't it? It, it was almost a seven-ten <laughs> split. Instead, it's just a ten-pin, and that's about the biggest break of this championship. Seven didn't want to go, but somebody kept giving him an invitation, and it finally fell over. <laughs> <laughs> Second shot for Miss Bethel, Delilah. Oh no. Game number five. Can Norfolk State rally? They're down 14 going into the final five. Game number five. Norfolk State with a three to one edge as far as this best of seven Baker format is concerned. Strikes hard to come by. You must fill frames and convert spares. Victoria Jones looking to do that. So Victoria Jones. So let's see if Victoria Jones can pick up the spare. Much needed, and she does. Good shot there, Charlie. Maintains a 13-pin lead with just a couple frames to go. Norfolk State not throwing any strikes, so all UMES has to do is keep filling frames, and. This is one way to do it. Just make your spares. Wow, Ooh, tough split for her. First errant shot I can remember from Courtney. From Courtney in quite some time. Now she's left herself in 2-4-10. Uh, this is not a washout. This is a split. And it's very makeable, but obviously uh, not the easiest split conversion. try so a couple of open frames for Norfolk State here in this game number five and Merlin Easton Shore has jumped out to a 25 point of 25 10 lead I should say her team struggled early on we're down three to nothing let's see if she can get them back in here Leaves three standing. Take that same ball down, move right. A more, much more straight, straighter through the front. That ball just never picks up. Watch that. Ten pin fall late, no washout. Shot there. Gets the spare. And keeps her team out in front by 22 pins. And of course, here's Kelsey Yarborough. Two straight strikes for her, her last two times up. If Kelsey doesn't strike here, we are more than likely moving on to a game six. Senior from Winston-Salem. 
and seven won't go. With a spare. Yes. Kelsey Yarborough. Now the anchor bowler for UMES, this young lady, Thashina, Thashina Saros, who told me earlier she didn't know about a lot of programs as far as bowling, and nobody really came after her, didn't know whether she could make it, but somehow found her way to UMES, knew about the history of their bowling program, and spent two years, she comes in as a junior, spent two years at the University of Aruba, is the 10th frame of game number five. She needs to make this to lock up this game. If she misses this. Norfolk State can win it. Yeah, Delilah Bethel can step up in the 10th frame and win this MEAC championship. Again, it's, it, it, to me, it's just a lot of the same. She changes bowling balls, but she gets this one a little bit right. It doesn't recover. This might be Norfolk State's uh, tournament. Well, they have another chance again, and it's uh, left up in the hands of the only player on their squad that has experience in this position. And Delilah Bethel has been here before. She was on the 2012 championship team, and right now she needs three strikes in the 10th frame to win this game by one pin and win the MEAC championship for Norf Norfolk State University. Down nine pens right now. 10th frame, game five. Will Norfolk State wrap up their second ever MEAC championship here in this 10th frame? Or will UMES survive to force a game six of this best of seven series? It's in the hands of Delilah Bethel. Needs three strikes. First shot. Not going to get it. Going to game six. So Merlin Easton Shore, down three games to nothing, has won the last two to cut it to a 3-2 deficit. Game six coming up in a moment. Format best of seven series and Norfolk State trying for their second MEAC championship. They won it back in 2012. They lead it three games to two over the two-time defending champion, Maryland Eastern Shore. And you're talking about Maryland Eastern Shore, known for their international players. Of course, this year's squad features Mariano Alvarado from Mexico, Tatiana Munoz from Colombia, and Tashina Saras from Aruba. And that's like half of their squad. There are only six players here. Victoria Jones is out of Baltimore. Valerie Riggin from California. And you have uh, Melanie Copey, a young lady from Ontario, New York. I, I like the recruiting. My bottom line is I want to win. You know, if it was me, I'd recruit stateside. I'd recruit internationally. I would see who would want to come to my program and and be a part of a, of a great tradition, a great program, and, and that's exactly what UMES does. Well, as we start game number seven, six rather, of the best of seven, we'll start off with Carrie Hickey. For Norfolk State, spare strike last two times up. And she leaves a couple standing here in the first frame of game six. 42-foot oil pattern, two-and-a-half one-to ratio. What that means is a one-to-one -one ratio would be completely flat all the way across. A typical house shot pattern would probably be an eight to one ratio, meaning the farther to the outside part of the lane you get, the drier it is, and the more towards the middle, the slicker it gets. And, and obviously an eight to one ratio would be a fairly easy oil pattern to bowl on, and that's what we traditionally see 
in league bowling. This, on the other hand, folks, uh, nowhere even close to that. This pattern is hard and flat, and that's what happened. And, and so the scoring pace and the amount of strikes we're seeing is indicative of the difficulty of the oil pattern. And now, with Munoz leading off here in the sixth frame, she leads off in high fashion, as they say, in tall cotton with a strike. <laughs> well, it looks like they're starting to, to build up a little bit of push or hold area on this right lane. And, and that, that ball actually looked like it laid off a bit before it went into the pocket. That was a great shot by Tatiana Munoz. Courtney Williford, last two rolls. She left open frames. She has a split here. Seven split. Yeah, and if she can't slide the two over the, the ten pin, she's going to find another open frame. And You know, I, I hate to beat a dead horse because I'm an animal lover, but how many times do we have to talk about you let UMES hang around long enough? And Well, just saying. Courtney Williford. And she only picks up one, so another third straight open frame for the senior out of Norfolk, Virginia. And we know what Valerie has done the last couple times up. Pretty straight shot there that got a little bit away from her and she misses the headpin, but leaves herself the one, two standing and real easy spare conversion. Valerie Riggin trying for the spare and she makes it. Courtney Brown. Left an open frame in game number five in the eighth frame. Let's see what she can do here. Prior to that, she had rolled three straight strikes. This is a good looking ball and she gets another strike for the day, Courtney Brown. She gave that one a little air time, a little loft on this shot, watch this. Great balance, steady head at the foul line. Her eighth Man. strike today. She's she's uh, performed magnificently for the Spartans. What a nice job she's done all day long. This is Victoria Jones. Senior out of Baltimore, Maryland, went to Western High there. First team all-conference a year ago. And she leaves a pair standing. Trying to go straighter, you can see it, and and I like that strategy. You know, she was slower early on, trying to hook it, and on a flat oil pattern, man, it becomes very sensitive. She'll lose all but two. That is Coach Bandy from this team. Everybody's a senior. There's a spare picked up. All of the starters are seniors, with the exception of the China Saros. You can see the look on Coach Bandy's face. She's starting to feel it. She's she's starting to feel, hey. They're yeah, bowling like they're supposed we're, to. We're gonna get yeah. We're gonna get back in this. Kelsey Yarborough spare the last time. Nine spare. Strike this time. Kelsey Yarborough. So back to back strikes for the Spartans of Norfolk State. Just one open frame, and that was in the second frame by Courtney Williford. Great shot here, and that cuts the, the deficit to just three pins. Well, you can't throw it any better than that. Boy, Curve, she, boy it curved at the right time, didn't it? Yeah, but she put an awful good touch on that shot. I really like her game. Look at that beautiful arm swing, hands open, just in between second, or excuse me, fourth and fifth arrow, about the 22nd, 23rd board, and a great result. Ten pin goes down, and all ten go down. <laughs> oh, 
Yeah. Second straight time she's left that pin, isn't it? Yeah, no, I can't remember. Let's see, I'd have to go back to the game prior, but her team was working on a double and she crosses over leaving the five pin. Norfolk State just down by four pins. This is the anchor bowler, fifth frame, game number six, Delilah Bethel, Piscataway, New Jersey. Look out. A rare, rare missing miss the, for her. Yeah, missing the five pin, too. The, right in the middle of the lane. It's too bad. China Soros. Continue to try to play the middle part of the lane with no success whatsoever. So here is Soros. Her team up by 16 pins. Trying to force a seventh and deciding game. So. A four-point lead for uh, lead rather for University of Maryland Eastern Shore. Game number six of this best of seven Baker format. Lanes, AMF Lanes in Chesapeake, Virginia, along with PBA Hall of Famer Randy Peterson. I'm Charlie Neal, and we're glad you could join us. 2015 MIAC Bowling Championships, best of seven Baker format series, and this is game number six. Maryland Eastern Shore trailing three games to two, trying to make it three games to three. But again, the young lady who's been misconsistent for the Lady Spartans of Norfolk State today, Courtney Brown, she has eight strikes to her credit so far today. Make it nine. Well, sometimes it's better to be lucky than good, and this is one of those times. Crosses over, gets a nice break through on the Brooklyn strike, but more importantly gives her her team a little bit of a chance here with the ninth and tenth frame left for Norfolk State. UMES still the 17 pin advantage as and a strike this time for Victoria Jones. Hey, only hey, her fourth strike today. Hey, Charlie. Yes. Here they come. <laughs> I'm back. I think, <laughs> I, I think this is the best shot of the day for Victoria Jones. I like the speed. I like the direct down and in line, and it was a great result. Kelsey Yarborough for Norfolk State. Spare strikes. Last time down, she still can't get the strike. Just leaves one standing, though, Kelsey Yarborough. Yeah, they needed that, though, to double up on that strike they have in the eighth frame to get back in this and cut that deficit down. It's going to be a tough go for Norfolk State to win this game. You talk to her. She makes the spare. Talked about when she doesn't strike, her attitude kind of changes tremendously. But so does a lot of people. Yours did. Of course it did. <laughs> well, you wanted to see an unhappy person with a bad attitude. Watch me bowl when I'm not striking. Mariana Alvarado had a strike in the fourth frame of this game number six. Side of target through the nose. Just it, it's it's just mind-boggling to me that the middle part of the lane hasn't developed at all. With the amount of plastic balls that have been thrown down the middle part of the lane, there's nothing there. Normally, plastic balls thrown down the middle part of the lane will increase that hold area. Mm -hmm. If you're throwing reactive resin balls down the middle part of the lane, it would actually be absorbing oil, taking oil off. Plastic balls actually will pick that oil and drag, drag it, it down the middle Spread part of the it. lane. 
not necessarily spread, spread it, it, not it spread, but, but drag it. Yeah. And by dragging it, it increases the hold area in the middle part of the lane. And when you're bowling on a flat oil pattern, especially a power player, that's what that's what they wait for, for the middle to develop. The middle part of the lane hasn't developed yet, and I don't think it's going to. And without a double there, UMES is going to take this to a seventh game. This is the tenth frame. Anchor bowler Delilah Bethel, who in the tenth frame of the last game had a nine spare nine. That is in game number five. Let's see what she does here. In her tenth frame. Needs to make the spare. She does. And she'll get one more shot. Yeah, but all uh, Soros needs to do is stay behind the foul line and keep the ball in the lane. And they're going to take this to a seventh and deciding game. University of Maryland Eastern Shore fighting and clawing its way all the way back was basically one shot away from losing, from losing this. In game number three, in, oh, game in number game four. four. Yeah, yeah and, and they've they've clawed their way back, and they only lost that game by seven pins. Yeah. There is a strike there by Bethel, but they still will wind up with a 167. They started out with a 225 in game one, 173 game two, and 180 in game three to take a three nothing lead, but lost by seven pins in game four lost by 11 pins in game five and right now they're down 18 pins in game number six with the anchor bowler Pashina Saros ready to roll here in frame number 10 for the Lady Hawks of UMES who are looking to force a seventh and deciding game in this best of seven series they take this game number six more importantly they tie the series at three apiece game seven the deciding game coming up when we return place a senior or young, another young lady from New Jersey by the name of Ashley Buck she will come in out of Farmingdale New Jersey and how high and she'll replace Courtney Williford who has struggled a little bit in this game to try to get some lift to this this squad and see what happens in this deciding game talked about getting thrown into the lion's cage <laughs> it's game seven of the world series you're coming off the bench with no warm-up pitches i mean tough spot to be in we'll see what happens carrie hickey leads it off with this game seven with a strike that's back-to-back -back strikes for miss hickey So the reason why the two teams have not changed lanes is the higher seed in game seven, uh, game seven gets the choice. And can stay, and that's what UMES decided to do. They decided to stay on the lane that they were comfortable in, in which they won, what, games four and six? <laughs> I, you know, I, it, and it's great strategy. You know, stay on the lane that, uh, that you've had success on in that you're not going back over to the left lane and try to figure out how much transition that lane's gone through. The winner of this game wins the 2015 MEAC Bowling Championship. This is the seventh game. Norfolk State led it three games to none. Had an opportunity to wrap it up in game four. But UMES would not go down without a fight. And the spare is made by Munoz as we are in the, the rubber game of the match. Now, this is the young lady who hasn't bowled at all today, senior out of Farmingdale, New Jersey, sociology major. This is Ashley Buck. And right now, poor Ashley, all she's trying to do is keep the insides from coming to the outside. She bowled against Delilah Bethel and Courtney Brown in high school. She said to me yesterday, they didn't like me. <laughs> when we bowled against each other. And they all wound up as teammates wow. at Norfolk State. <laughs> Interesting. A little hyperventilating going on right now. 
Just trying to stay upright. Again, a brutal position to be thrown into. Ashley Buck. Gets the, oh, just Mr. Spears, seven pin state. Gutsy move by Coach Harrison. Not sure it's the right one. That's a good one. Looked like it was almost too smooth. It had been too flat, didn't it? <laughs> she, hey, she's bringing the flamethrower. I mean, she's not fooling around. She's not holding back, and she is bringing it. So Valerie Riggin, back-to-back -back spares in the sixth game, and she comes up with a big strike here in game number seven. Courtney Brown. Yes. I saw that one coming. <laughs> There's your Norfolk State MVP right there. Ten strikes for Courtney Brown today. How much difference, how much different would this outcome have been if Courtney Brown was, was holding anchor? anchor? I was going to say, I knew that's where you were going with that. This would be over already. And not to take anything away from Delilah, but... Nobody's outperformed Courtney Brown on that side of the fence. And what makes it even more, I guess, disheartening oh. as we leave the seven pin for Victoria Jones is the fact that not a player from Norfolk State made the all-conference team first or second. Three from UMES made the all-conference team. So that in itself has got to be a disheartening factor. UMES had three on the first team. Delaware State had three on the second team. a and had two on the first team, and Bethune-Cookman had two on the second team. Kelsey Yarborough. Down 12 with a spare here, fourth frame. Hmm. Well, I'll tell you, no matter who wins this, they've given each other all they can handle, haven't they? Seven <laughs> games, man. You, listen, as an athlete competing in sports, I mean, you can't ask for anything better than this. This is for the MEAC championships. This is what these players train for. It's what they practice for. It's what they work hard for all season long, and and it's all come down to six more frames, really. Mariana Alvarado, six game, game number six, rather, a strike and a seven spare. And here we go again. We've seen this. We, we've seen this picture before, haven't we? We've been to this this movie. <laughs> been to this barbecue once or twice. <laughs> she gets it just a little bit farther to the right, and again, it hits the sheet of oil. It's This is almost what I would call a reverse block in that there's more hook in the middle part of the lane than there is the outside part of the lane, and and that's just a, a you know, byproduct of this oil pattern. See if she can pick the spare up. That's going to happen. Bad time for an open frame. And so Alvarado, just her second open frame all day long. Meanwhile, the anchor bowler, Delilah Bethel for Norfolk State. Strike here could go a long way. Kerry Hickey in that leadoff position has been solid for this team. Oh, good try. And the reason what I meant by that is she strikes here in the fifth. She sets up that sixth frame for Kara Hickey, Hickey. Certainly. Who has back-to-back -back strikes to her credit already.
fair is made by Delilah Bethel. So the anchor now for Maryland Eastern Shore, just a three-pin lead between Norfolk State and UMES in this rubber game of this best of seven series, game number seven. Norfolk State led by three games, three to nothing. But Maryland Eastern Shore has fought back to tie this series. The China Saros. Just needs to spare to maintain the, the lead, but it's a very small lead. Oh, they're trailing if she spares. They're trailing by three. They are down by three, yeah. I mean, it, quite honestly, based on her last few shots on this right lane, which have both been 310 splits, she's got to feel pretty good about just leaving the four pin. Real easy spare. And she'll go into halftime of game seven, if you will. Only trailing by three. And a spare is made. And it is a three-pin lead for Norfolk State. The final five frames of this rubber game of this 2015 bowling championship in just a moment. For Norfolk State, as far as the championship is concerned, five frames left. In this seventh game of this best of seven Baker format series, will it be UMES wrapping up their eighth MEAC championship or the second one for the Norfolk State Lady Spartans, their first since 2012? And we find Kerry Hickey leading off here in the sixth frame of game number seven. Back to back strikes for her the last two rolls. Let's see if this makes it three in a row. No, she has a split. Ooh. Not a not that bad of a shot, but boy, did she pay for it going through the nose. Hickey, chemistry major. And she does leave one standing, the 10 pin. And it's an open frame to start off the final five frames here for Norfolk State. That was a great, sh a great shot right there of the, the ladies just all huddled up and their hands on each other's shoulders. I mean, that's what makes this sport and, and this, this competition so great. Look at that. That's just awesome. Oh, seven pin betrayed her. Pretty good shot there. It did betray her. It, it stood up, stuck its tongue out at her. <laughs> this is a really good shot. Great balance, the foul line, steady head. And looking to get that mixer off that seven pin, and she was denied. The spear is made by Munoz. Now, you spoke of the young lady who was the replacement, Ashley Buck, sociology major out of Howell High in Farmingdale, New Jersey. As you look at Coach Harrison, Wilhelmina. Gutsy move, though, Coach. I, I'll give you that. She wants to win. My. Just, just wow. make, couldn't get any closer to that, could you? Oh my! <laughs> she, you know, she just barely missed the four seven in the fir her first time up, and this time she barely catches enough of the four pin. Oh, look at her willing it over! Please, not back to back open frames, please. Oh, okay, never a doubt. that's going to lose a lot of their star people. They're going to lose everybody except Soros and Melanie Copia, a freshman, but they do have commitments already from a young lady by the name of Jackie Rhoda 
from Portage, Indiana, and another young lady by the name of Haley Cummings from Dayton, Ohio. So the, the cupboard is not going to be bare for University of Maryland Eastern Shore. This is just textbook. What a great spare. And her team reaction. Oh, look, yeah. Look, here comes. Coach, I love it. Courtney Brown. She has been the MVP for Norfolk State today. Can she continue? One of the rare times she did not strike. She had 10 strikes before that roll today. As we look at Courtney Brown, second shot. Bears made. Nicely done. Ten pin lead, eighth frame coming up for UMES. And that'll be Victoria Jones. Eight spare, strike, nine spare. Last three rolls. Strike again, Victoria Jones. I saw it, man. Her reaction started to get really good going straight. She went light. Then she left that ringing seven pin, and I knew it was just a matter of time. She got dialed in, and she got dialed in in a hurry on that lane. Kelsey Yarborough. Need it. Got it. Ooh, big shot there. Sets up the 10th frame. This is going to come down to the last. Fourth and fifth players. For both sides, as you take a look at just a great shot by Kelsey Yarborough. Now it is up to Mariana Alvarado and their anchor bowler, who is going to step up and perform. It's going to be very interesting. Both anchors uh, are really being put on the hot seat. This is the <laughs> seventh and deciding game. Look out. Hey, look, no 310 split on the right lane. Just the three pin. That in itself is a big break. Problem is now, no matter what UMES does, if the spare is converted, they can't shut out Norfolk State. If Norfolk State strikes out, they'll shoot 191. If UMES converts here and then strikes out in the 10th frame, UMES will shoot 191. All right, good spare there. So Alvarado converts to spare. And it's up to the anchor bowler right now for Norfolk State, Delilah Bethel. You want my prediction? Go ahead. If she strikes on this ball, they win. All That's right. what I'm predicting. Here it is, Delilah Bethel. Oh, get The left-hander. Yeah, that ball was right out of her hand the whole way. Now they're going to need a small miracle in an open frame. And that's if she converts the five pin. She's already missed one of these already in this competition today. So it's come down to this after seven games and 10 frames, nine frames, yeah. it's come down to this. I mean, if she spares and strikes, they're going to shoot 171, and it'll force. UMES to, to mark in the 10th. So the spare made by Bethel. Now she'll have one more shot. And this ball is important because she wants to keep, you know, the count. If she hits a strike. And stay in the one. Sure. Yeah, and stay at least in the. 171. Yeah, if. 181. If she wants to stay 170 and above. If UMES goes nine out, they would shoot 169. So nine or better. Looks good. All right. Nine is enough to force UMES 
and their anchor bowler. So to the, Mark in the 10th frame. So the pressure on the rookie of the year in the MIAC, that young lady, the Shina Saros from Aruba. Her team up by 11 pins right now, but it's very important what she does here. Does MIAC, the MIAC championship go to Norfolk State or does UMES repeat for the third straight year? <laughs> 10 pins still standing. I'll tell you what, I got to give it to her, though. What a gutsy shot that was. She gave it some room to the right and just absolutely lambasted those finger grips at the bottom of the swing. She caught all of it. Ball tricked up, made sure it came off the end of that pattern, and it was still a weak 10, but now she's just one 10 pin away. If she misses this, UMES loses by a pin. So it's all, it all comes down to her being able to convert this 10 pin here for UMES to win their eighth bowling championship overall, their third in a row. Comes down to this roll. Got it. And UMES is going to win this one. Well, she needs to get one pin to right. stay I behind mean, the foul let's say line. She doesn't, she doesn't throw I mean, a gutter ball, right? You gotta pretty much <laughs> you gotta pretty much expect that this is over, but what a battle. And you know, we talked about how you cannot let this team hang around and they found a way, they persevered and down three games to none. They lost the first one two twenty five to two ten, one seventy three to one fifty three to second, and was down by three pins. They lost game number three, one eighty to one seventy seven but came back in game number four, five, and six. And that's it, 178 to 170. And congratulations to Coach Kayla Bandy, the seniors at the University of Maryland Eastern Shore, and their squad who for the third straight year and the eighth time overall walks away with the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference Bowling Championship. And we'll be back to wrap things up from Chesapeake, Virginia in just a moment. You by Allstate. Are you in good hands? Welcome back to Chesapeake, Virginia, and we say congratulations to the University of Maryland Eastern Shore for winning their third straight and eighth overall MEAC Bowling Championship. And let's go down to Randy, who's with Coach Bandy right now. Randy? Thanks, Charlie. Coach Bandy and Randy uh, has a good tone to it. Uh, first of all, Coach, congratulations, Assistant Coach Cunningham, and the, to the rest of the Lady Hawks. Wow, what a performance. Now, Coach, your team's down 3-0. What was going through your mind at that point? It's not too late. Never tell this team it's too late because they're always going to come back fighting. What kind of advice did you give them and, and what kind of coaching was going on as your team was fighting back? I think that Brett was seeing the lanes the whole time and we just stuck to the plan. Stay patient, wait for the lanes to come to you. The girls came together and said, you know what, we can do this together. And they did it together. Coach, congratulations on your eighth title. Now, T, you know what, at the start of this uh, show, I, I was uh, really in awe with your game. I said, you know, this young lady's got a prototypical power game, the kind of power game that you see on the pro tour that I cover. Where did you learn that style? Um, from a good friend of mine in Aruba. Uh, we practice a lot. Uh, his name is Erolito, and he's the one that really helped me in the beginning to get the reps and change my game. Well, it, it, you're a lot of fun to watch. And what does this win, and you being the anchor bowler, the reigning MIAC Rookie of the Year, what does all this mean for you and your team? Well, for me and the team, is it was, a, it's, I don't have a word to describe it. <laughs> I'm really emotional. <laughs> this is my dream, guys. Thank you, and we made it happen. Congratulations, Lady Hawks, on your eighth MIAC championship title. Way to go. All right, the University of Maryland, the Eastern Shore Lady Hawks, the 2015 Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference bowling champions who rallied from a 3-0 deficit to beat Norfolk State 4-3. A reminder to tune in in April, April 11th, for ESPNU's coverage of the NCAA Bowling Championship. 
for Randy Peterson and our entire crew here in Chesapeake, Virginia, Charlie Neal saying so long. And again, congratulations to ULMES, the winners of this year's championship.